This is code.org and we have a ton of options for getting user input, saving it to variables, and then, well, doing what we need with it. In this video, I'm going through all the different ways we can get user input, collect that, and get it saved to a variable so we can make use of it. So, yep, we have text entry boxes. Oh, I'm supposed to put a year, blah, blah, blah. We have buttons. We have drop downs. We have sliders, which I always like. We have radio buttons, which only like notice, click one at a time. I'll show you how to do that. And then, of course, check boxes where you can click multiple. Oh, and buttons like usual. Boom, and working variables. Let's get going. So, we want to get input from the user, and then you're going to want to save it to a variable, right? So I have my basic layout of my hackathon app right here. And by basic, I mean nothing because I want to walk through you several different ways you can grab input from your user for use in your application. First is going to be a text box, right? And that is what it is. Uh, I'll name this. Uh, I'm going to have them put in a year I was thinking for this. So I'll say year input and placeholder can be anything enter a year right and then i might need to change that text color or the placeholder color wherever that is but i'll leave it for now so enter a year and then i'm going to want to label uh right you'll put a question above each of your questions so the user knows what it is so year uh, i'm going to say year question label to keep good design here and then pick a year or, or what year do you want? Something like this. Now, this is only one type of input. I'll put a button right here for submit. And there's two different ways you can collect it, though. Submit BTN, and I'll just say submit, I guess. And then you could also use a drop-down menu. So if you wanted them to pick from a certain selection of uh, options, maybe you want them to choose a certain country because you want to use the countries column in your info. I'll say country drop. And now I would just put the names of the countries that I would need, depending on the data set, right? And all of the data sets have different information included in them. So this one's mostly numbers, but look, maybe I want to do states. So whatever I would like in here, you put it directly in your drop box. You could certainly copy and paste. We'll pretend like mine does states. So I'll do Washington state, I guess, and Texas and utah and i'm just doing states that i've lived apparently uh north carolina so on and so forth okay so and i guess i'll change this to states so this is another way to collect information the drop down menu a third way is through or fourth i guess is through sliders no that would be third and check boxes let me look at sliders first so slider, maybe I want to do, a, I could do ratings, right? I could do stars. I could do, I mean, anything. Let me look at this. Most followers, nah, nah. Sure, planets in the solar system. Let's preview this. And so maybe I want to do the force of gravity. So I could use gravity, and if it has less than that, I can use the slider. So slider, my minimum value right now is zero if they have it way over here. And when I, maybe I want my max to be 10 if they have it way over there. And then the size of the steps one, that's fine. The value right now is 50. I'll set that start value to five. You can change the size, of course. And if I'm going to do gravity, I'll do gravity slider. And this would be another way to collect information on numbers from the user. Once again, you would definitely want, and I'll say slider label right you'd want information for them to be able to know what's going on so i'll put a one here and then you could put two of these i'm going to be lazy right now and just go 10 and you get the idea it's really ugly but you get the idea okay this you could use for a number if you would like and then let's also do a radio button Radio button means that you can only select one of them. So if you wanted to do blue or green, maybe. So this radio button ID is radio button two. The ID group, I'm going to do colors, means that is the only option. It links them together. So I'll leave that as button two, or maybe I should do 
colors radio two okay and then colors radio one so here's radio buttons and then i can go ahead and put uh maybe i do pink label right and i'll write the word pink and then i'm gonna leave those colors not a button and now i'm gonna do another label for this one and i'll say green a label and i'm gonna write the word green all right and obviously i don't want it to cover it up and these are just labels these aren't actual buttons this is just the theme i have and finally, a checkbox means you can choose more than one, right? So a checkbox means that they are allowed to choose more than one item. So it would be similar, except they could choose multiple. And same idea here, checkbox two, checkbox one. And I can put next to it whatever I want. Maybe I'll do um, a dog check, right? And then... This one will be cat check and it will allow them to select both of those. Okay. And you would put labels along these as well. Something like that. And yeah. okay, let's go over how to use each of these. Let me just make sure you can tell what goes where. That's fine. I'm making that bigger so I can grab it. Okay, good enough. Now, how to get them. That's my information for the other part of this project. You would want to leave that there. Let me go ahead and make a variable that will store this information. So I'm going to, you could do it at the top or you could do it inside of your on event. It kind of depends what you want to do. But I'm just going to call this year. And actually, I'll say year equal to nothing because they haven't chosen a year yet. So year. And then I'm going to do this drop menu. So I'll say for that, I don't know, state drop. Okay. And then I'm going to do the slider. So slider number maybe. And then I'm going to do the, now the radio button can only be one or the other. So we'll take a look at that. Let's have it be, let's have it be color for now. Okay. And then finally animal. All right, and you might not necessarily want all these at the top. Now, what you're going to do to want to grab them is you want to pick an event. You have some options here. So on the event, that what? Well, maybe you use the submit button. That would make sense if you want to use a button. So on the event that the submit button is clicked, what do I want to do? Well, I might actually want to grab information from this text input. So I'll say year, for example year will be equal to and then i got to grab this text how do i do that ui controls get the text or if i want it to be a number i can say get number okay get text what's this called year input all right that will do that uh, and this is not the only way to get information right i could use a submit button also for the uh state so i could do state drop, right? So when they click submit, I'm also going to get the text of what? States drop. And we can test this out. Let me just put some watchers on these variables. So year, and then I'm going to watch state. And this just lets me see what these variables are equal to. So at first, if I hit run, undefined. Now, one, two, three, four, submit. This is now Washington, because that's what the job was. And this is, boom, okay? Now you don't have to do it this way. Say you don't want to use a submit button. You want a drop down menu without a submit. That's great. All I have to do now is instead of doing it on the submit button, I'm going to say, let me reset so I can see, uh, states drop on click. Now nah, I'm going to do on change. Now I'm going to set it whenever this changes. So now when I hit run, year is undefined. Submit. Now year is defined, but notice that the state's drop variable, this variable is not. But the second I do this, boom, automatic. Pretty cool. All right, now how about this slider? What can we do there? Same thing. I could use an on submit. I could use an on change. Let's see. Uh, 
slider. Like, no, not the label. Gravity slider, because I was going to make this be about gravity. And then I want to, my variable for this was slider number. And I was going to set that equal to, maybe I want to do get number if I know it's just going to be an integer. Okay, get number. What is it? Gravity slider. Now, I probably wouldn't want to do this on click though. So let me show you. Uh, what's my variable? Slider number. It's really handy to use these watchers, by the way, if you're not noticing. Let me go ahead and do zoop, zoop. And now if I click this, what happens? I'm going to unclick. It's now eight. It's now two. Okay, so click's actually working reasonably well. You could also do a change on this. You probably wouldn't want to do mouse over, but maybe on change. So, boom. Yeah, it looks like either of those work great. All right, let's talk the radio buttons on event. And then on the event that colors radio one is clicked, you could do this. Notice that my radio buttons don't have a default starting one. So let me go back into design and change that. Let's see, hidden, checked. Now, if I start by default on one of my radio buttons, like I said, only one can be clicked at a time. Whoa. Well, it's supposed to be only one. Radio group. Oh, I have to set the groups. Four radio buttons. This group is colors. This group has to be colors. Now they're the same. Okay. And then I'm going to check this one. There we are. Now when I hit run, green will always be checked. And then if I select pink, it unchecks green. So if you're using a radio button, I would check one by default, right? So since I know when the program starts, that it is going to be equal to green, I'm gonna go ahead and say up here, green, okay? And then the only time I'm going to change that is I could do one for each button. Yep, that's what I would wanna do. So on colors one, nope, on colors two, click, okay? I wanna get, uh, if colors two is clicked, I now know that it is pink, except that's a problem. Hmm. Changed. Let's say if colors two, okay, we're going to say if it's clicked, right? And then what we can do here is, yeah, we're going to do an if, get property, colors two is checked. So if this is true, what do I want to do? I want my variable color to equal pink. Now I would need one of these just in case they change their mind and go back to the other color, but pink. Yes. So let's try this out. Boom. Oh, I didn't put it down here. So right now it is pink. Now let's try it again. It starts as green. I click here, it becomes pink. You would want to do this again for color one and turn it to green uh, the same type of way. Finally, this. So these are going to work in a similar fashion. Let me go into design to show you. Now, dog check, cat check. You're just going to want to have these individual is the easiest way to do it. So it would be like this on event, right? I would do on event and then on change. And you can grab that information. You can set it to be a dog or a cat. I want to also, though, just say you could do all of this as one. So instead of each change, if you want to use a submit button, I'm going to say, OK, I want to grab all this user input for some reason. I can do that just with one submit button. So it might look better if I like. Or make more sense if I put this thing at the bottom. Right? And now let me hit code and let me run. I don't use animal, that's fine. Let me hit run. And now if I start entering stuff, notice that my variables aren't being used yet. And that's because I'm using just a single submit to check everything. Boom. And now that's what will take care of it all. Okay, so there's a lot of options available to you for user input. And it's great because you can do a lot of creative things. Once you have these saved in a variable, of course, you can start checking if they are equal to something in the list and outputting that. I am excited for the awesome apps you built.